Good morning, bears, and welcome to the Thursday Friday epic of Characters of Greece. And we're going to start off with Jordan's beautiful slideshow. If you're going for an A, you should have, was Alexander the Great really great? And this is a CR based on your research on the internet, the, the short videos we've watched, and any other information, including opinions. So what does Jordan think? He says, I think Alexander the Great really was great. Here is why. Nice. First, he beat Athens and made sure they knew that he was their king now and after that he burned down. What is that? Burned down theirs to the ground. After that, he went on to battle the Persian Empire and won even with the odds on the other team's favor. Yes, that's from the video. Also being outnumbered. Then he defeated all of the Persian Empire and ruled all of Greece till he died. Ruled all of Greece. So, what this is called a rough draft. Since this is history, and we're not spending a lot of time editing, this is fine for in here. If you were in an English class, you'd want to go back, do a little editing, put a space in there, capitalize, check your spelling. Sometimes it's hard with the spelling, because this rolled is right, so they're not going to put a red line there, but it's actually ruled. So that's where you get in trouble sometimes on spelling, because you use a word that actually is a word, so you don't get the spell check. And then, but it's actually So then he defeated all of the Persian... That's their capital because of it's an empire, it's a noun, it's a name. But we're not going to fix all that. Good job, Jordan. Now, I don't see Jordan's quote, and so I'm just going to use Jordan as an example real quick on if you really want to go A level. If you're in class every day, you can still pull it off, but you remember, you're supposed to have all Mandy's. And you might say to yourself, well, where's those Mandy's? I, I wasn't here. I missed a day. This is our epic lesson today. We're going to get that to you in a second. But you go back to Wednesday. Super cool long video with game graphics on uh, Alexander the Great. Was he great facts? And then you go back to Tuesday. Pick one favorite. Make a top slide with just that quote. So we come down here and we had these Greek quotes. I'm not going to click this because I can't. I don't want to leave this page because I'm still editing. But if you click there, you're going to have a lot of Greek quotes. You copy one of those, you place it into a top slide called Greek Quotes, find one, paste it, say the time period that it was said by who, so if it was Plato, you'd find the time he lived, estimate when he might have said the quote, put that time period, and then you can explain whether and what you think the quote means. So you want to have that slide if you're going for A. You want to have Alexander the Great slide, the quote slide, and then your basics. So we had an Alexander the Great. That's some research, Greek philosophy, Aristotle. And some of your research on these, Aristotle, might tell you their time period uh, when you put it in there. It's always good to try to put time periods in there to kind of get a framework of when people lived. See, this per Pericles has it, 495 to 429 BC. So he has... A time period there so if he says something like this then you could estimate it's in the middle of his life then we have Aries okay so now we're into today's lesson the Greek gods and so I'm gonna give you two options today you do not have to do both some of you like this we're talking about mythology here we're talking about ancient tales now in these ancient tales all ancient civilizations in India, Hinduism, Buddhism, the Bible, uh, what else, uh, you know, the Torah. They use mythological hyperbole and stories to tell truths. Sometimes it's hard to figure out, is this story 100% like a uh, fictional story? Is it a fictional story to tell a truth about human nature and how human nature relates to the gods or the planets? Or are there truths in it? Well, the Iliad and the, and the Odyssey are similar. They are obviously mythological tales. Now, some people wouldn't say obviously, maybe. The Cyclops lived at some point. Some people, you can go on the internet and you can find people that have found Cyclops. But it's, you do your research because I'm pretty sure they're fake. But there are people that will do deep dives into research. Most people agree that the Iliad, which has the Trojan War, and the Odyssey are mythological tales, which means fake, 
but that contain historical truths. For one thing, we can see how they dressed. Now look at this Aries here. This is obviously a secondary source, exaggerated to almost superhero, but gods are like superheroes, traits. But you can get some, some reality here. Their helmets did look like this. They had shields that were like this. It's very hot in Athens. When we saw all these videos, you notice that they had helmets, they had shields, they had, might have had some armor, but they weren't like the knights. They weren't like a knight in shining armor. There's no way it was too hot. In England and in Europe, when they had the knights and all that armor and big giant cloaks and covered in furs, that's way more protective. But they were fighting in climates that might have been freezing and cold. And so they could have all of that gear on to fight. They're living in, it's hot. It's like summer in California. Imagine fighting in giant armor. You just couldn't do it. So that's why they oftentimes almost half naked, but protected with shields and long spears because it was hot. So you can learn about geography there. You can learn about their weapons, which is an accomplishment. And then maybe they pray to gods. So much, look how, I mean, so much discussion. And they loved war, obviously, because they had a war god. So very good. And then we have Zeus, once again, a powerful warlike creature. Also superhuman in this picture. Uh, notice Cinder of Thunder and Lightning. So some people think like the Norse gods, like uh, Thor and Odin, you know, they, they, that's later in history, but they have a lot of traits that are similar. And so when you study mythological gods, you'll see some similarities. And then he has Poseidon. Now, if we think about superheroes, we might want to think about, who was it, Aquaman, and then there's an, oh, Namor in Marvel Comics. So in a way, the gods have lived on in superheroes. So Poseidon of the ocean, good, good job in the Olympians. Now, let's dive into what we're learning about today. Two things today you can do. You're going to either find some grapes. You can find it in these pictures. You can find it in the reading we're going to do. You can find it in the videos that we're going to watch. The reading is primary source because that's coming from the ancient text, the Odyssey. I've provided you a read aloud and the text itself. And then you can also look at the secondary source, the movies that are made, and learn about geography, religion, accomplishments, anything you want, society, politics. Just pick one or two and analyze these sources we're going to look today in our Odyssey epic. By the way, Thursday, Friday, epic, the Odyssey is an epic poem and you can do that or you can write your own fantasy mythological tale make up your own stuff just make it fun fun cool story based in greece it can be as long as you want as short as you want for those that are creative and just want to write a story you're like i'm itching to write a exciting story well write a story because that's what we're studying the odyssey is one of two major ancient greek epic poems attributed to Homer. It is one of the oldest extant works of literature still read by contemporary audiences. As with the Iliad, the poem is divided into 24 books. It follows the Greek hero Odysseus, king of Ithaca, and his journey home after the Trojan War. So the Trojan War, many believe that it is a, an historical event, but it's told in mythological ways with this Odysseus. Now this is after that Trojan War and his journey home. Let's dive into it. Now I have provided for the advanced learner a multiple array of sources. We have a short video here which we are going to watch together. We have an Odyssey full audio book in case you, hey, I want to read the whole thing like Lena does. You can sit back and play this link and just listen to the book. I like to read along, full text. Now we'll see if they match because when people translate things, they're not the same. We're going to study that a little bit. Just briefly mention that today as we read book nine, The Cyclops Story. And then we're going to see if that Cyclops story matches the film. There's three different film sources on the internet. I don't want to get my YouTube kicked off. Sometimes when I use a video from somebody else, if it's a movie, sometimes they, it, they freeze it and I have to edit it. So I'm just going to play those links in class. 
If you do your own research on YouTube, you can find the Cyclops story. Type in Cyclops story. You'll find like three different movies at least. And it's fun to see the different graphics and the different way they, they tell the story. We're going to go with the classic. All right, let's do this. Everything you need to know how to read Homer's Odyssey sounds like something for us. So we're going to watch this and we'll dive into the Odyssey. Epic. Now, I'm going to teach you a couple tricks here. This is for advanced learners, people that really want to learn and really want to become better readers. What you want to do is you're going to go find this. This is the Odyssey full audiobook. I have provided the link in groups. You're going to go to 336. We will do this together right now, so don't worry about it as far as in this class for a section. And we will listen and read along. And where do we find the read along? The read along is also in your groups. If I can open this back up. And oh boy, oh boy, did I mess up? Oh boy, this could be bad. I might have messed up all my groups. There it is. Use that, use that back button sometimes, guys. I almost messed up. So if you come in here, you'll see, nope, lost all my links. So anyway, I have to put all these links back in here. But you'll have the link to the audiobook in here, which is in the Internet's Classics Archive, and it's book nine. So say you wanted to read along with the text, you could. If you just like to read, you can just start reading. It's epic. Ask Lena. There's a download here. This is ancient text. There's all kinds of things in the ancient text. But for us, let's see if we can do a read-along. Now, you might notice the words are a little different. And we're just going to read the beginning as an audio read-aloud to set the stage. Then we're going to go watch the video portion of the Cyclops because it's fun. And then I'll, we'll get to our assignment. All right, let's do this. Links back in. So what you want to do here, the... Video we just watched, if you want to go watch that, is the overview video. The secondary source Cyclops thing we're going to watch in a minute, that's the YouTube video, classic. Three different versions of that, like I said. Do your own search. Audiobook and the text. So let's go take out the audiobook and the text. Odyssey, full audiobook text. You can have this playing along while you do work and hear the whole audio and of the Odyssey. Guess how long? 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours to read it. So we are at 336. I put that in our groups as a notice. Now let's play this. Now watch. You play that. Ulysses declares himself and begins his story. The and sea then we go to our other link. And Cyclops. And Ulysses, and Ulysses answers. We open up our text. It's a good, good thing, thing to hear a bard with such a divine, divine voice, voice as this, as this man, man has. has. There is, there is nothing, nothing better or more, or more delightful, delightful than when a whole people make merry, make merry together. together. With the, the guests guest sitting orderly to listen, while, while the table is loaded, loaded with bread and meats, and the, the cupbearer draws, draws wine and fills, fills his cup for every man. This, this is indeed as fair a sight as a man can see. Now, now however, since, since you are inclined to ask the story of my sorrows, and, and rekindle my own sad, sad memories in respect of them. I do, I do not know how, how to begin, begin nor yet how, how to continue, continue and conclude my tale. For the, for the hand of heaven has, has been laid heavily upon me. That you, you too may know it. And one, one day, if I outlive, I outlive this time of sorrow, may become, become my guests, though I live, live so far away from all of you. I am, I am Ulysses. Ulysses. Son, Son of Laertes, Laertes renowned, renowned among mankind for all manner of subtlety, so that, so that my fame ascends to heaven. I live, I live in Ithaca, Ithaca where, where there is a high mountain, mountain called Neretum, covered, covered with forests. forests. And, not and not far from it, it there, is there is a group of islands very, very near to one another, the Lichium, Same, and the, and the wooded island of Zacynthus. It lies squat on the horizon. All, all highest up, up in the sea towards, towards the sunset, while the, while the others lie, lie away from it towards dawn. dawn. It, is it is a rugged, rugged island, but it breeds, breeds brave, brave men, men, and my, and my eyes, eyes know none, none that they, they better love to look upon. upon. The goddess, the goddess Calypso, Calypso kept me with her in her cave, 
and wanted, and wanted me to marry her, her as, as did also, also the cunning Aeneid goddess Circe. But they can neither of them persuade me, for there, there is nothing dearer to a man than his own country and his, and his parents. And however, however splendid a home he may have in a foreign country, country if it be far from father or mother, he does, he does not care about it. it. Now, however, I will, I will tell you of the many hazardous adventures which by Jove's will I met with on my return from Troy. When, when I had set sail fence, the wind, the wind took me first to Ismarus, which is the city of the Seacons. There, there I sacked the town and put, and put the people to the sword. sword. We're going to pick up our story here. Meanwhile, he drove all the ewes inside, as well as the she-goats that he was going to milk. So remember, when you're doing this stuff, you have to bounce back and forth a little bit. So I go over to my audio book. I click play. Leaving, Leaving the mails. mails. Both, Both rams, rams and he-goats outside, outside in the yards. The yards. Then, then he rolled a huge stone to the, to the mouth, mouth of the cave. cave. So, so huge, huge that two and twenty strong four-wheeled four wagons could, could not be enough, enough to draw it from its place against, against the doorway. When he, when he had done so, he sat, sat down, down and milked his ewes and goats. All, all in due course, and then, and then he let each of them have her own young. He curdled, he curdled half the milk and set, and set it aside in wicker strainers. But the but other half, he poured into bowls and he might drink, drink it for his supper. When, when he had got through with all his work, he lit, lit the fire and then, then caught, caught sight of us, us whereupon, whereupon he said, Strangers, who are, who are you? Where, where do you sail from? Are you traders or do you sail the sea as rovers with your hands against every man? and, and every, every man's hand, hand against you. We were, we were frightened, frightened out of our senses by his loud voice and monstrous form. But, but I, managed I managed to say, we are, we are Achaeans on our, on our way home, home from Troy, Troy. And, and by the will of Jove, and stress, and stress of weather, we have, we have been, been driven far out of our course. We are, we are the people of Agamemnon, Agamemnon son of Atreus, who has, who has won infinite renown throughout the whole world. world. Okay, so there's a little taste of the read-along. You can listen to it. You can read it. Think about some of the descriptions. We saw some corroboration from the introduction with our little video. We're now meeting the Cyclops. Cyclops. Now remember, this is a primary source. This was written thousands of years, 1500, maybe 2000 BC, maybe even be longer before that. Because remember, they sang these tales. They told these tales around fires. And then later on, it was written down. So just because it was written down, maybe at 500 BC, the stories go back way beyond that. Where there's Cyclops seems to be mythological. But is it based on real cities, real geography, real agriculture and the type of lands, the, the type of ships they had, the weapons they used? These are all things we can learn about grapes from this tale. Now, final thing, and then we'll decide. Are you going to write a story? Or are you going to just share what you've learned about grapes from the reading, the audio, the video, and now a secondary source, the movie. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe she, she was a scare with them. No, no, no tools. tools. No, no weapons. weapons. Oh, oh. Oh, they're many in number. Oh. No grain. No oil. The Bring the wine, savages. The wine. We'll trade it for water. Just double checking that it's actually recording. Cyclops at the end. Oh. Once again, we learn about ships. Does it match the audiobook? 
So this is a secondary source, Enter the Cyclops. All right, let's get started with her lesson. Pretty epic. Okay, so let's get going here. So we've kind of jumped around. We saw an overview, what's the Odyssey? We've done a little read along with the actual primary source. We've compared it to a secondary source. Here's a ship right here. And so we now get to our lesson and you have options. You can cite from this. Go to the links that I've provided and cite from this if you want to write. I like to give people options. So Thursday, Friday, Epic. What's your two options? Option one, read and watch text looking for geographical, religious, accomplishments, politics, economics, religion, society. Just pick one or two that you learned. Ships, religion, geography. There's tons in everything we just analyzed. Explain how those sources show you these elements about life in Greece. That's one option. If you decide to do that, you do not have to do option two. Option two, write a short story using the characters of ancient Greece. Create your own gods. Use the existing gods. Use creatures from ancient Greece like the Cerebus or the Cyclops. Or create your own characters to tell a mythological tale just like they did back in the Greece days. And use as many slides as you want. You can make it a short story. You can make it a long story. You can include images. This is for you creative people that, want to, that you're ready to tell stories well, create your own mythological tale based on ancient Greek characters. Here's your notes about where the Cyclops story is. We have our links. We're studying epics. This is a Thursday, Friday epic. Let's roll. Here we go.